G'day. The other day I noticed that my uh, compound slide was slipping a little bit. I don't use it terribly often and so it usually lives in the in the zero degree position but um, every so often I do and it was slipping a little bit and when I looked at it it was the the, the studs and the nuts, they're only a half nut, um, were, were worn out. So today's video is about the process of making up some replacement um, studs. In fact, it's more about the, the measuring of and, and fitting of than the making up because the, the part itself is, is pretty straightforward to make. Uh, but uh, yes, I thought I'd take you along for a little bit of lathe maintenance. This is the compound slide of my lathe and uh, it's actually going to cause me some trouble. And the reason for that is that if I take that off, and it's alright, I don't normally turn with that loose, and I take that off, these bolts are the ones that stop it from rotating and unfortunately I've been using this for oh how long has this been I reckon I've had this lathe for for around about 15 20 years and when I first got it I had to replace these and I'll show you a picture of what was in there in the first place the threads have started to wear again and so I have to make up new uh, circular T-nuts. T now some people just use a straight one, wedge that in there and off they go but uh, I don't like doing that. I like to, if that's got a radius and I like to have the radius on there. Unfortunately to get these things out I've got to disassemble the, the top slide here because that's the exit hole. So what I'm trying to do at the moment is measure everything up so that I can put that back on, hopefully one of these is good enough that I can turn some parts and then uh, put it on the mill, take off the the radii and uh, then finally disassemble this thing. While I'm there I'll probably give it a little bit of a clean and a love and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's, I, I must admit I've, I've been feeling these go for a little while and uh, I'm a bit lazy, I, I, I didn't want to really have to take it apart, but I'm now at a point where I have to um, because it's just going to uh, get far worse from, from here on. The 3 8 Whitworth thread, and unfortunately that's the nut that, that secures them. Um, and that I think is part of the trouble. There's, there's only you know two, three threads in there, and so particularly where it, it always sits, that or hole, but once you start getting up here, um, it's a bit dicey so I think what I might have to do is make up new uh, bolts and then have a think about it and possibly even make up some some new nuts but these two are, are undercuts obviously uh, and so it makes it difficult to um, to measure them from the measurements I've taken though that the depth of or the the depth of the undercut is probably about four and a half five millimeters I've got a pin gauge here which is uh, 1.9 and if I put that in there and roll that in, I can come in with my calipers and measure that. Now that's just a smidge over what the diameter there is. So if I do a bit of maths, you know, and, and work on a radius and all that sort of thing, and then take that bit away, I should be able to work out what the inside diameter of that undercut is. For the inside, I relied on that diameter how much that would be pushed out by having a, um, a pin in there, working out what the radius was, taking out the, the diameter of the pin, and that gave me a radius of the inside here. Outside I can't do that because any pin would be propped up by the sides of the, of the, the curve. However, I did find a, a 3 16 ball bearing in my collection of odds and sods. Uh, which will do the same thing for me but this time I'm going to put that in the corner there measure the distance there because I know that that's five inches across and then take that away to give me uh, basically what that diameter is so um, that's that's uh, that plan I've put the two bolts here that I've got just to stop that ball slipping down because just down there you might just to be able to make out that's the the, the cross slide screw um, 
so I don't want to drop any swarf or balls or anything like that in there if I can help it because I might find that I need to put the lathe together to do something before I get a chance to, uh, to take off this cross slide and, and, and replace those um, bolts. But um, yeah, just something to bear in mind. Uh, I'm probably going to, once I've taken that ball out, I'm probably going to give that a bit of a vacuum to make sure that I don't have any foreign material that might get into there. This is the result of most of my measurements. The only other measurement I haven't got is the centres of that and I'll, t I'll take that from the, the cross slide rather than trying to infer it from here. But these two in blue are the ones that I picked out. Now this lathe was built back in the late 50s. Uh, it's got lots of, of Whitworth and things threads on there so I'm hoping for some round, right, nice round numbers for some of these things. That one certainly is, that's five inches. Um, that one comes out to four and eleven thirty seconds nominal. That's three and three six, uh, three and nine sixteenth. So I'm hoping that some of these will turn out to be uh, inch dimensions that I can round up. These two don't look like it, um, but that just makes it a little bit easier to 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 think that yeah, I might be right. What I'm going to do though is use these numbers, allow a little bit there for clearance and I'm, what I'm hoping is that this will give me um, something that's good enough I can put in there and maybe when I pop the, the, um, the cross slide off I could measure all that up um, properly and um, next time, if there is a next time, uh, I can have some, some parts ready and waiting but also of, of just the right size. Here's a stud and a nut that I've uh, made up uh, off camera. Nothing terribly exciting about these. This is at, out of a bit of uh, EN25, which is vaguely similar to something like 4140. Uh, EN is, a, is an English designation. And the nuts that I've made up are just out of a bit of um, hot rolled steel. I figure that uh, if I'm going to have something that's going to fail, I'd prefer the studs, which are horrible things to try and get to, to, to be intact uh, and strip the nuts. So. I've, I've, when I made up the hex bar for that I, I made up a length so when I need to cut a couple more nuts uh, I'll, I'll be able to do that. Now you could do this on a lathe but I'm going to do it on the mill. Uh, but the next thing I need to do is put those, those uh, radii in there. What I've done is I've made up a block like that and what I'm going to do with that is bolt that to a T-slot like that and then come out the appropriate distance to drill a hole that that will go into. I've already tapped through here an M3 uh, thread and so once that's there I can then put that in there, use a grub screw to, to snug up on that and that'll hold it enough I think that I can then use the rotary table to, to spin it back and forth and, uh, and put those, those radii in there. It's not symmetric um, it's not just a matter of saying, well, if that's where my, my centre point is, this one's this far out, this one's this far out. Um, those dif distances are different. They're on the whiteboard, and I'll pull that out again in a minute to, to give myself a reference. Um, but that's, the, that's how I'm going to do that. As I said, you could do this on a lathe. Uh, just a matter of attaching that to a face plate. The nice thing about doing it on the mill, though, is I can position that roughly where it needs to be, then come in and drill a hole precisely uh, where I want that and um, you know get that spot on with a lathe it's a matter of, of playing a little bit to uh, to get that right. Here we are just a little bit later um, I've had to use a, a, a strap clamp to hold that down and a rather large one at that just because the the groove runs out just there and so uh, Rather than having to make up a, a new T-nut, I just used a, a strap clamp. Uh, that bit of rod is the same thickness as that, so that's all good. The blanks go in there like that. And then using the grub screw, which I've, I've, I tapped all the way through before I put it on here, uh, and then position my hole, I should be basically spot on where I, where I want to be. Then I just have to position a cutter, get the offset right, and I should be able to, uh, to radius those parts quite easily.
there's the rock result with the with the radii on there. Uh, the parts fit together and, and sort of you know look similar, so I think there's a good chance. Uh, in hindsight, the one grub screw there is probably tempting fate a little bit. I, I, I felt a little bit of, of um, or saw a little bit of movement uh, and had to stop and re-tighten uh, on some of the earlier cuts. Probably another one in from the side wouldn't have been a bad idea. Um, the, the problem would have been of course exactly where that hole goes but I found I was able to position that reasonably well so I probably could have done one from the side. The reason you do it from the side not from the other from from uh, an adjacent side, should we say, and not the opposite side, is just that if you screw from there and there, you're pushing it back against that surface there. But if you have a screw from there and a screw from there, you're effectively juggling that round bit uh, on the two screws. And so it, it doesn't actually help to secure it. So uh, always remember that you don't want your grub screws diametrically opposite. You want them at 90 degrees to each other or something like that. Uh, another option could have been if I had a longer bit of thread I could have put that into a threaded plate and then run a run a lock nut down that um, and maybe next time I do that I might uh, might consider that one. Uh, the only trouble is of course is how do you then hold it so you can then take that extra bit of material away because that height is, is limited. This is my lathe with the cross slide taken off. Uh, gib strip there and I think I need to make up a new one of those at some stage because it's it's a little bit on the loose side. There's the slot where the the nuts go in. This is one of the old ones and as you can see that that goes in there uh, and that's one of the new ones and that fits as well so it looks like my measurements were, were all good. Uh, while I'm here I'm going to, well I already have, I vacuumed out in here to get some of the chips out. I've wiped off the old oil uh, I'll put new oil down before I reassemble it, but as you can see from that, you know, that's that's pretty mucky stuff, so that needs to uh, be cleaned up. Uh, that's that's probably the um, dirt, muck, grit, swarf of ages sitting there. So uh, that's that. While I'm here, I also want to measure up the nut. Uh, you might just be able to see there's a little bit of, uh, of backlash, which if I can get rid of that, that'll be nice. So um, to do that I need to take off the, the, the rest of the taper turning attachment here. For those of you who aren't familiar with the taper turning device, this is it basically here. What it does is that when it's in use, this slide uh, is anchored to the bed with a, with a clamp arrangement. There's an a, a arrangement to adjust the angle here. And what happens is as the carriage feeds along, because this is fixed, this um, part here slides in the in the channel and that's what moves the the, um, the, the, the cross slide in and out and so uh, this one is, is, a, is a nice one because it's got a telescopic screw there are cheaper ones out there add-ons where you have to basically disassemble the, the screw to be able to use the taper turning attachment but this one this one's a, a built-in uh, a friend of mine who's got a um, uh, Colchester said that he's he's got one from a chipmaster, which is a similar similar sort of device. Um, but uh, yes, that's that's how they work. Anyway, uh, the the uh, the studs fit, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I'll I'll do some measurements here and put it all back together. But uh, thanks for watching. See you for the next one.